Resources and energy as well. Thank you for the uh, good comments. We need more data, guys. <laughs> Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity for a second round here. Um, uh, I mentioned critical minerals. Uh, I'd like to ask you more, a little, a little bit more about geothermal, because as, as we think about these areas of opportunity, um, there's a lot of focus on wind and solar, and I don't mean to be pointing to my friend from Colorado there, but um, geothermal is kind of like, it's the mature technology because it's been around for a while, but the technologies that are being used nowadays are not necessarily uh, what we have seen in the past. You have had an interest in this, um, a business interest, and I'm a little bit excited to know what you think the potential is for you in this new role at DOE to help accelerate more in the geothermal development space and reduce some of the project uncertainty. So I'm, I'm looking for, for better assurance for some of those bright people who have these crazy wild ideas that we can do things on ADAC and, and on Alaska and, and out on Mount Spur to, to try to reduce these, these barriers to entry in, in an energy area that's been around for a long time. This should not be so hard. What can we do? And are you excited about it from a DOE perspective? Very much so. Very much so. Look, I'm, I'm uprooting my life and moving to Washington, D.C. if I get the honor and privilege of being confirmed because I love energy, all kinds of energy for all Americans. And, and I love that you highlight geothermal, just tremendous potential energy source. I worked on this 30-some years ago and wrote some papers about it and a new idea called Hot Dry Rock, where geothermal today is where there's hot rocks approachable, they have fractures in them so fluid can flow and they're full of water. Well, that's a small set of the microcosm, but anywhere we drill right here, we drill three miles underground, it's exceedingly hot. That energy is sitting there. So the idea of hot dry rock is to inject water into a well, flow through that rock, and therefore take some of the heat out of that rock and make that water very hot and then flow it up and produce electricity from it, produce heating for homes or houses, it's just an enormous, abundant energy resource below everyone's feet. Can I interrupt you and just ask you to save that energy and passion for when you are confirmed as Secretary of Energy and, and elevate this within the department? Um, I know everybody wants to get to the top of the list, but if, if I can express disappointment with what I have seen within the Department of Energy over the years, we've seen great things in great areas and geothermal just kind of sits back there as, as kind of the forgotten child. And we're not, we're not gonna allow that to happen. So I appreciate that passion. Um, let me ask you about, uh, about Alaska's natural gas. You've talked a lot about how, the, um, uh, how we've really seen this, this revolution when it comes to, to being able to access our natural gas through the fracking. Um, you know Alaska, you've been up there, you know our issues. Um, Congress has approved a, a loan guarantee for, for an Alaska gas line, and I would just ask for your support if confirmed that you're going to work with the delegation to help stand up the loan guarantee through regulations, whatever may be necessary to ensure that DOE can actually accept <coughs> the, the application when the project proponents are ready. It should be an easy answer. Yes, yeah, Senator, tremendous resources in Alaska of oil, natural gas, minerals, mining, logging, geothermal. You've got it all. You've got it all. And to grow natural gas production in Alaska and build infrastructure to export that to the world, given how close it is to the biggest, fastest growing markets in the world in Asia, I think is a tremendous idea. Well, great for our country, great for Alaska. And I'm confident that President-elect Trump will be a, will be a champion of these ideas of growing American energy production and influence in the world. Well, we've got it, as you mentioned. We have it, um, uh, and we're, we're ready, willing. Um, we just need good partners at the federal level to help us advance this. And last point on that, we have seen some really um, critical 
energy investments in Alaska as a result of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, a lot of folks on this committee helped with that, but the DOE programs that are funded by IJA have, have provided a lot of benefit to Alaska projects so far. Uh, most of them are already underway. They range for everything from the renewable, uh, the rural renewable energy investments, uh, carbon storage, uh, transmission upgrades is huge, demonstration of, of long duration storage. So I just want your assurance that we're going to um, we're going to still be able to continue these projects as a priority within DOE. What we have started, we don't want to have a, a, a drop-off here. We want to have a smooth transition for these existing DOE projects to be able to continue to allow us to build out that, uh, that infrastructure, that, uh, that transmission capacity that's going to um, allow for a betterment of Alaskans and, and really our opportunity to help Americans. I'm thrilled to see the breadth of energy innovation in Alaska and would love to see that continue and expect that it will continue. Are you going to come up and visit? Absolutely. I figured it didn't take much of an invitation. I appreciate the fact that you've got, uh, uh, you've got ties to the area already, and um, I appreciate that. But thank you for your willingness to give the committee this much time. I know that you've got a lot more energy, but I think that your grandson is probably bored with us. So <laughs> might be time to end, Mr. Chairman. I think his grandson seems <laughs> riveted, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, before we go to Senator Hickenlooper, uh, uh, I'll note that love the GOP.